So that's that one. Okay, I think we're good to go. No, here comes Khalil. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as All right, I think we're good to go. Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hamdan Kathiran Tayyibra Mubarakan Fihi. Wa after a salam wa atimat aslimi ala nabihil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So this is going to be, inshallah, <coughs> tonight uh, from the uh, 26th juz of the Quran. And I just I will share again just a a, a couple of verses uh, that are found in here because um, as the suar gets shorter, sometimes the um, the topic can sometimes jump around. But I thought a couple things to point out that were important that occur in um, that occur in this juz of the Quran. So one, the beginning of it is. The start of Surah Al-Ahqaf, the 46th verse of the Qur'an. And a little bit of background about Surah Al-Ahqaf itself. Um, this Surah and perhaps the one after are revealed right around the time of some pretty tragic events in the life of the Prophet Wasallam. So Surah Al-Ahqaf comes on the death of the beloved wife of the Prophet وسلم, Khadija radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, as well as of Abu Talib, right, the uncle and father figure of the Prophet who, you know, sheltered him. Uh, and in fact, this was also at the height of the boycott of the Quraysh, of the Meccans, uh, against the Prophet وسلم. So, you know, sometimes when we read through the Qur'an and, you know, we just kind of, we just read it like a book, right? Not always remembering that these events were going on, right? So when you, you know, when you, when you, when you read these and understand that this was simultaneously going on, imagine, yeah, Allah, losing your wife, and it's clear that... Uh, Khadija was somebody very special to the Prophet Sallallahu He had a, a very unique bond with her uh, and obviously a very profound love. And some of the most tranquil parts of his life are with her. Remember, the, the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam begins on kind of shaky ground in that you know he lost his parents and then his grandfather and then into the you know into the care of his uncle, and it's really if you ex from a, looking at it from a certain angle, you know it's those you know decade or two you know or not quite but you know somewhere around maybe a decade and a half or so um, where he just had a good life. He had a happy life. They had you know a few children, and it's you know so for him to lose. That person in his life, you know, it's extremely difficult. So as we look at these, just kind of keep some of that in the back of, of your mind. So I wanted to look at um, the around the 30th verse. Um, and in the 30th verse of Surah Al-Ahqaf, there's something curious that happens, Right. And that is, right, actually, if you really start the 29th verse. وَإِذْ صَرَفَنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفْرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ And we caused a group of the jinn to listen in on this revelation, on this Qur'an. And that it is, it was sent for both mankind and jinn. Sometimes we forget that it is also a revelation that was sent as a means of guidance for the jinn as well. And you get the feeling from at least this particular verse that they were not the intended subject, right? 
But Allah being all knowing and all seeing, right? What what is Sarafana Iraika Nafran min al Jinni Yastami Un al Quran? Right? That they listen in on it. And when they heard it, Falamma Hadaruhu Kalu Ansitu, right? When they heard it, they said, like, hush, listen. What is this? We we weren't expecting to hear this. Falamma Qudiya Wallu ila qawmihim mundirin. They were so awestruck by what they heard that they went back to their own people, meaning to the jinn, and they informed them, they went to them as warners and informed them. قَالُوا يَا قَوْمَنَا إِنَّا سَمِعَنَا كِتَابًا أُنزِلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مُوسَى مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ They go back to their, to their people and they say, Oh my people, oh our people, listen to this, listen to this book, right? That has been revealed after Moses. So it means that the jinn, are also, they have knowledge of all of the uh, different NBA, just in the same, you know, as you know, here we are, you know, thousands of years later after Musa alayhi salam or Ibrahim, we know of them. They know of them as well. And they say, what is Musaddiqan Lima Baina Yadeh? It's confirming what was in these older revelations, right? Yahdi ila al haq. And it is guiding to the truth. وَإِلَىٰ طَرِيقٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And to an upright path. Not just that it's true, like one plus one is two, right? But it is also مُسْتَقِيمٍ طَرِيق مُسْتَقِيمٍ right? It guides to an upright path. And they tell their people, يَا قَوْمَنَا أَجِيبُوا دَاعِيَ اللَّهِ وَآمِلُوا بِهِ يَفْرِقْ لَكُمْ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكُمْ O my people, respond to Allah's caller. Meaning respond to the Prophet ﷺ. So this shows that the jinn were also recipients of his message, right? Even if it was something unplanned, so to speak, it's amazing who are the people that will then go and warn. Now for myself, I've always, you know, when I've read this verse, even though the Prophet ﷺ was peach, you know, uh, uh, preaching directly to the Meccans and focusing on them, it was this, this, this group of jinn who happened to stumble upon and hear this. And I've always wondered or likened this a little bit to the American Muslim experience, particularly in the African American experience, that, you know, we tend to, in America, if there is any da'wah at all, we tend to want to focus on the dominant culture, right? Uh, and yet, it's the, it was the non-dominant culture that really listened to this thing and ran with it and then went back to their people and said, hey, you have to listen to this. I've always personally felt a strong connection with this that, you know, it's interesting in the American context, obviously in Europe, perhaps, you know, very different, but something very unique in the American context, in the way Islam has propagated, is that it has predominantly been in the African American community that has accepted Islam out of all of the Westerners right on this side of the pond. Um, and that we have then gone into our own community and really tried to uh, proselytize and spread Islam. Right, listen to this and let, respond to the caller, right, and who will, what, he will forgive you of your sins. And he will save you from a painful torment, right? And then Allah says, Right? And for the one that doesn't respond to Allah, right? For the one that doesn't respond to Him, right? Then there is, there is uh, no one that can thwart Allah in the earth, right? So meaning also, He's, he's sending a simultaneous message to the Prophet Sallallahu If people don't respond to it, don't, don't fret because they will not be able to challenge the, the, the qadr or the awamr or the decree of Allah. But he's also telling the jinn that the jinn who aren't going to respond, right, uh, you're doing so at your own detriment. But I always found that something, you know, you know, I'm not, obviously that is not tafsir, that's just a commentary, a reflection of something that, you know, when I came across this, that I, it's been interesting that sometimes the direct audience is the last one to finally grasp it, but it's all the people on the periphery. And we see this now. I mean, we've, Islam has been, well, theoretically, Islam has been in America for a very long time, if you include the West African slaves that came and who know what was before that. But, but let's just say comfortably in the last 100, uh, maybe 120, 30 years or so in America, 
um, that the predominant group to respond has not been the dominant group, right? And that's that's a lesson for us to, just as the Prophet Sallallahu was told to keep preaching, right? Keep speaking the truth, keep preaching, keep telling these people about this thing because you never know who is listening, right? One of the things certainly to take away from this is you never know who is listening, right? And the Prophet Sallallahu is preaching to these, you know, kind of hardhead, knucklehead, Quraysh, right, you know, pagan Arabs that just are not, for the most part, up to this point in the revelation, they're just not really having it, they're not listening to it. And Allah says what? وَإِذْ صَرَّفَنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفْرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُنَ الْقُرْآنِ Right? And while you were busy doing that, we caused a small contingent of jinn to come and listen to this, and they were amazed, and they went back to their own people and spread it. So the same way for us, do not be uh, completely um, consumed by the idea of the dominant culture accepting Islam, right? Um, that is something, if it is ever to happen, is one, the command of Allah. Two, if, we, if, if, if revelation and the revelatory time period is anything to uh, use as a barometer or a yardstick to measure that by, that's something that takes a while, right? The vast majority of the Arabs in the Hijaz did not embrace Islam, uh, actually really until almost after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi right? Um, you know, even after the Fath of Mecca, of course, yes, you had large numbers, but I'm talking about the whole area, that, that took time, right? So we have to be patient with that, but you never know who's listening. And that's why now you see, you go to, well, not right now, but before you would go to the masjid, and we had this at middle ground happen several times. And on Jum'ah, you know, somebody who was a Mexican-American or uh, from some other non-traditional background or somebody who was not from the dominant culture uh, winds up embracing Islam. I mean, there was one sister who was literally of a Mexican background, living homeless on the street in uh, uh, Skid Row, and her, she was allowed to come on parole to middle ground. She took a shahada. Like we, you know, we were able to connect with her. So, you know, when you start to see people that you don't normally imagine being Muslim, becoming Muslim, think of this verse in Surah Al-Ahqaf, وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفْرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ Right? That uh, you will see people coming and listening to this. And then they themselves, inshallah, will go back and perhaps be a messenger, right, to their own people. And then, if we look at Surah Muhammad, um, which, is the, which is the next follow-up, right, the 40, 47th chapter, right? Um, Allah talks about faith a lot in this particular chapter, about being tested, right? And Allah says about this, he This is an interesting, if we break down the language a little bit. Right? If we break down the language a little bit here, it's very interesting. Allah says, and without a doubt, right? When we have the noon tashdeed, right? That, uh, right, that's for emphasis. Allah says, without a doubt, we will teach you. Now, how do we understand this? Allah says, we will test you so much until we know who are the real people struggling, the mujahideen. Because this was at a point in time where the, the, the Muslims were persecuted, persecuted, persecuted. And finally, Allah gave permission for them to be able to preserve their own lives and to, and to fight back. And of course, some people, you know, once that order was given, they had some trepidation. And, you know, Allah is saying, until we know. But if Allah is all-knowing, Allah is al-alim, how can it be hatta na'lam al-mujahideen? Right, the language here, this is why we call it majaz, and, 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 and it's, it's also balagha. Allah knows the hearts of people and doesn't need for them to do anything to know who they are, right? But Allah says, in a way, we are going to test you so that we know what, because it's going to come out of you, right? It, you are going to behave in such a way, right, that it will become apparent. Meaning that also we will know. We will know who is also, you know, uh, who is really being truthful. I always found this, you know, uh, very amazing language, 
right? حتى نعلم المجاهدين منكم والصابرين. We will, we will know. You'll be tested so much. We will know who's really up for the fight and who has perseverance, the ability to struggle, right? وَنَبُلُوَا right? أَخْبَارَكُمْ and your report. What does this mean that we're going to test, you know, your your report, like your your reputation, right? Because some people were more concerned about their reputation. Uh, than having to really fight and and to do uh, you know what's right, um, the the idea of having your 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 reputation is on the line, right? Um, when you're put in a situation where you have to struggle and you have to fight for the truth, it's natural sometimes we you know we worry about our reputation. What is so and so going to think of us? Or you know when the truth comes to you that solidly in your life. You have to be willing, to, as we would say, it's a horrible analogy, but you have to be willing to put all your chips on the table, right? Not to make a gambling analogy, right? But you have to be willing to, when the truth confronts you, you have to be willing to go all in. Now, it might not manifest for you and I in our life on something as heavy as fighting for our lives, but it will undoubtedly manifest in our life in some way or another that we are going to have to stand for the truth. And this is something also we would want our children to understand that, you know, part of being a Muslim is to stand for the truth and then your reputation will, you know, you will have a reputation as a person who stands for the truth. Not as a person who will talk about it, right? But when it really comes to, has all kinds of excuses but no, really is willing to, right, you know, go, as we say, go to the mat or go to the floor, right? So this, this uh, chapter, the 47th chapter, Surah Muhammad, it talks a lot about faith uh, being tested. And if we, if we understand that um, when we go through difficulties in life, this is part of what Allah has promised us, that He will indeed test us in all types of hardship. Um, but we, when, 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 when the time comes, we don't want to be like those that then let the opportunity slip past them. And then, oh, I wish I could have, I wish I could have. Or the worst, and we know there's the kind of person that, you know, uh, I, I, if I were allowed to, I would do A, B, and C. You know, not that I'm like, anti-Trump or pro-Trump or I don't really think but I, I just remember one of his speeches it was so ridiculous um, he was talking about the military right and he was like I would have joined the military and I think it was I don't know maybe one of these public shootings he was like I would have gone down there and I would I'm like this guy is a draft dodger right this is a dude who got out of did everything he could of joining the military and now has this fascination with the military and likes big, th you know, things that explode and big explosions and whatnot, right? But when it came time for him to sign up and to put America first and all those things, right? He made every effort to dodge around that. And we don't want to be that kind of person that doesn't stand for the truth Especially when it's hard. And that's usually when we're going to be asked to stand for the truth, right? Is when things are hard, not when things are easy, right? Um, so just, uh, uh, you know, as you read through this, particularly the 47th chapter, a lot of it has to do with struggle and standing for the truth and accepting that you will be tested. And when we say tested, um, <coughs> alhamdulillah, particularly in this chapter, Having your faith tested in this chapter means your life is going to be put on the line. Right? That's what it means in this chapter. Now, for you and I, it you know, it just who knows how it will play out. But I just want you to understand some of the backstory of how I mean it got real at this point in the life of the Prophet. Um, and I've always wondered, is that one of the reasons why this chapter is named after the Prophet Sallallahu because it was like really reaching this height of having to put everything on the line and stand for the truth. So anyway, I'll open up if you guys have any questions or comments on anything, inshallah.